Hey you. Good evening and morning to you. Sometimes you go motorboating through the RSI website and the ship catches your eye and you say, I like you and I want you. But then you can't buy the ship because it's a limited time sale. So you wait for the sale to happen and bam, it's a hundred dollars more expensive than it was. That's just how it works. The earlier you buy, the better deal you get on concept ships. The closer they get to releasing into the game, the more expensive it's gonna be. So let's take a look at where you can leverage the current prices to get a ship that you want now, while also locking in the price of concept ships before they go up. Like up, sub up, and ring up like a boss. This is info you can always figure out yourself, but compiling the options all together makes it a little easier to make a decision. Also, this is all predicated on the ships not being available for some time, and you have to catch these at the next ship sale, which happens at events like the upcoming Invictus week. So in anticipation of the ship sales, here we go from smallest savings to largest in USD, cause we'll be here all day trying to break down Durham and Pounds and Gold Press Latinum. The Prospector, one of the best money makers in the game right now. It's a miner that can move you from making some thousands doing deliveries to making tens of thousands at a time. A hundred thousand if you have a great run. You can add this to your cart right now for $155 or you can catch the next concept sale and grab the SRV for $5 less at $150. The SRV is a tugboat fitted with a tractor beam for hauling cargo containers and ships. And I think it'll find a lot of work rescuing people and their freight when things go south like when gale force winds blow ships full of drugs into the dock area walls at Lauraville. <laughs> but I lost a lot of credits on that one. So if you want a prospector but want to save a few bucks and maybe have a very cool ship later on, here you go. Have you always wanted a luxury ship without the luxury price tag? Well look no further my friend, you too can ride in luxury like, you know what, just go check out my 300i after dark video if you want to see why the 300 is hot. Normally 55 is the cost to be the boss in a wood grain interior. But if you pledge for the 100i instead, you'll save a few smackaroos. The 100i is a super fuel efficient luxury starter ship that has enough room for a desk somehow, and hopefully a bed. Pledging for the 100 will save you 10 bucks, get you into the reworked 300i, and once it drops, you can decide if she's a keeper or to put that 10 spot on the table to stay in a 300. The absolute biggest money maker in the game is the Caterpillar. With 576 SCU of cargo, a decent run in the cat nets you anywhere from 100,000 to just over a million credits depending on how much time and capital you have. Dollars to credits is the best move you can make at 295 bucks. But if you want to save some dough while making a vertical move, then the whole C is your ship. The whole C is a dedicated trading ship beast. 4,608 SCU of cargo space means that even if you were just trading scrap, you would make over 230,000 credits per run. That's a lot of lettuce. So what you do, C, you take that $295 that you spend on a cat and buy the whole C for $250 for a swell savings of $45, buddy. So this one might be a little confusing for the newbies who thought you just have a freelancer for free forever. The freelancer was put into the game as a workaround to a bug and once that bug is solved, the freelancer that you've grown to love and to hold and to squeeze, you'll be parting like butt cheeks on the throne. I've grown quite fond of the Lancer myself so I might be looking in this direction too. If you want to hold on to it, then your answer is in the whole A. This is the smallest of the whole line of dedicated cargo ships and holds 48 SCU of cargo which can net you near a million credits with the right cargo. Compared to the Freelancer, it comes with 18 less SCU, but it's something that will shine more as an orbital station to planet or large ship to station ferry for cargo. But that's for you to decide. Either way, the Freelancer costing 110 and the Hulle costing 60. You save 50 bucks and a lot of time while you decide which is better. If you prefer more cargo down the road, you can also get the Hull B, which carries 384 SCU, but at $90, you'll only be saving $20, and if you're gonna do that, you might wanna consider these next ships instead. The Constellation Andromeda. A freighter, and some would consider it also to be a gunship, had a lot of fun in this long boy. You get to take a nice little stroll in it during quantum jumps, it's got a couple of man turrets, 
a parasite ship which should be ready in a couple updates and a great view. If not for the nacelles that stick out of the shelves and get knocked off by stray cats sitting on high enough shelves, it would be a must have for anybody who loves to collect the fleet. But I'm sure they'll fix up those engines in the rework. It's got that classic look and it's a sight to behold when you see it on a landing pad at an outpost. Anyway, if you want to experience those feels but not for $225, then consider buying the Constellation Taurus. The Taurus is a variant focused more on cargo running and therefore will carry a lot more than the Andromeda. How much more? Well, there's all kind of guesses and speculation, but the truth is nobody knows, so we'll have to wait and see. At $150, bucks, you will save $75, and that's a significant difference. If you got something a little bigger in mind, then you can get yourself two ships for the price of one. Well, not exactly, but you have some very nice toys to play with, my dude. Ever wanted to get killed in the Titan, then come back at him with a hammerhead? If you answer yes to this question, then here's how to save $50 doing it. Together, those two ships will cost you $775. But if you act now, well, not now, but at the next sale, you just mosey on up to the counter and buy yourself a Nautilus. The Nautilus is a Carrick sized mine layer slash mine sweeper slash mine disarming ship. You'll be the go to guy, gal, pal when it comes to protecting or penetrating stellar assets. And when you're the go to guy for something as specialized as this, you're pretty much writing your own ticket. The Nautilus will cost you $725 now and will get you the best warship in the game and its starter sidekick. When you're all about the trade time for money life, then an outstanding trader and a nice little piece of alien tech hit the spot like an after shift beer. The Caterpillar and Banu Defender fill those holes quite nicely. The Cat is the best trader, obviously, but it's gonna be really versatile once they unlock all its abilities. It has a tractor beam station, the command module will be able to separate from the cargo module, the cargo modules can be repurposed, snazzy jazzy stuff, man. The Banu Defender is a quote unquote small fighter with room for two crew members, can be flown from either cockpit and has some of the coolest sounds and visual effects in the game. These two ships purchased individually will cost you $515. How do you get them cheaper than that you ask? Do like I did and get the Banu Merchant Man. This ship is just insane. It's a trader with 3,584 SCU of cargo. It has its own little mall where people can come to buy or sell things. It's got a conference room, nav table, big guns and all kinds of things. Dilly bops, and whiz bangs and stuff. This thing is already $100 more expensive than it was this time last year. Or maybe the year before, I don't remember which. Which is still relatively cheap for what you get. I wouldn't be surprised to see the price go up every time it's offered from here on out, so do with that what you may. It's not often you get to sit on the bridge of a ship with an actual captain's chair. It's also a rarity to have a ship that has a medical bed that you can respawn in after getting murked up by the guards at the outpost where you were trying to clear your prime stat at. The Starfarer and the Cuddy Red respectively allow you to do those things, but you gotta pay to play and together those very cool and very useful ships will cost you $435. In walks the Endeavor for $350. One of the most interesting ships out there because it's a science vessel, which can entail anything from sanctioned medical service to unsanctioned medical practices, to a good old narco ship cranking out that crank. The caveat in the pricing is that for $350, you get the base craft without any of the research pods. If I were to buy it, that's probably the way I go because I like to get that dopamine hit when I finally earn new things. But at the end of the day, you save 85 bucks on the ships you get until the Endeavor has folks ODing in its corridors. The Constellation Aquila fills out the exploration role of the Constellation series. I always want to say Aquila because I dated an Aquila and then there's Aquila the Bee. But anyway, it fits an Ursa rover, has an upgraded scanner suite, and has the best view of the series, not to mention a snub fighter sitting in the back. It's an easy breezy choice for anybody looking to explore by themselves or with the crew without the bulk of a Carrick or sacrificing room for a vehicle or cargo. The Buccaneer is the pirate ship that always shows up protecting bounties and it drives you insane with this agility, making it a hard target to hit. In other words, it's a good way to take a break from the Aquila. 
purchased individually, they'd run you 420 bucks. You can just about cut that price in half when you take a look at the Drake Corsair. A really polarizing ship in the community, some folks hate on it because it's asymmetrical design and the fact that it's Drake. Others love it because it's asymmetrical design and because it's Drake. I'm in the second camp and one way or another, I will have this ship. You can have it before the price goes up for its current tag of $205 and walk back and forth between tranquility and annoying the bejesus out of citizens in the meantime. Until the 890 jump drop, the Reclaimer was the most impressive ship in the game as far as sheer size. Even though it's no longer the biggest bull in the bay, it's still a monster and will be ready for some serious work once salvage gameplay drops. If you want to experience what it's like to feel like you're standing inside of a building in space and have a monster trader to rock with, then get yourself a whole D or a whole E. Combined, they would cost a smidge under $700, $695. So you'll save $345, man. Once the whole D is in the game, you'll have 20,736 SEU of cargo space to play with. That's a million credits just trading scrap. If over 20,000 SEU ain't enough for your future empire, you can get the whole E for 650 bucks, 70, 45 on the loaner ships and have over 98,000 SEU of cargo, which is ridiculous. 5 million credit runs selling scrap, <laughs> no cap. I know a lot of folks got the Mercury Star running fever right now. If you lock in now, you won't get ships whose value are higher than the Merc, but if you gotta have it, you'll at least get it before the ticket on it goes up. And in the meantime, you'll get the Freelancer and the Herald, which if you bought those together, it'd be 110 for the Freelancer, 85 for the Herald, for a total of 195. The Mercury Star Runner is gonna cost you 225 if you get it the next time it's available. Unless they go up at that time, we'll see. The Polaris is in the same lane in that it costs slightly more, but it locks you in on the price and is a great deal if you bought that hammerhead life or want to secure a capital ship before it gets more expensive. The hammerhead on its own is $725, the Polaris is $750, $25 more. A lot of these ships are expensive items to slap the credit card down for all in one go. Your other option is to upgrade an individual ship one step at a time. This is what I started out doing. It was kind of exciting to upgrade to a different ship every payday. If you start out with a game package containing the mighty, mighty Aurora, you'll have a lot of fun in the verse flying your ship that you own. It's yours and can't nobody tell you nothing. After a while, you start noticing things it would be nice to have, like a little more leg room or a bed suitable for more than a vampire or just more firepower or cargo. The next step that I think most folks would agree with would be a $25 upgrade to the Avenger Titan. You can check my Titan After Dark video to see why it's such a dope ship, but at the end of the day, you more than double your cargo and it's a scrappy, relatively durable ship in a fight. After sitting in that Cold War era cockpit for a while, the luxury of the 300i starts looking mighty, mighty good and for a $5 upgrade, why not? Those are the easy peasy calls to make. From here, it gets a little more tricky depending on your taste. You want to fight, race, trade, explore, or as much of that as you can all in one ship. Let's say you want multi-purpose. The best multi-purpose ships in the game are the Drake Cutlass and the Misk Freelancer. The Cutty is $10 cheaper than the Lancer, but it's still a $45 jump from the 300. You can either dive right on into the back of the Cutty, or you can use this opportunity to play with some of the other ships on the way up to the Cutty. The Reliant Core is an interesting ship to fly in for a while. It's a bit bare bones, but it could be upgraded with components and guns to make it a solid experience. Plus, if you're getting your FedEx on, it's a lot easier to walk them boxes up into the ramp than carry them up a ladder. Plus, it transforms, and you can't be mad at that for a $10 upgrade. From the core, you can upgrade another $10 into the Anvil Arrow. I'm not heavy into fighters, but this is probably the most fun to fly out of everything. Cut off all the assist and hug the ground while you stunt fly thrusters first into a cliff face. It's a popular ship and you'll get recommendations all over for the arrow. From here is a $25 upgrade to the Cuddy Black, unless you happen to catch a ship sale, in which case I'd recommend the Avenger Warlock because EMPs. Check my video to see all the fun you can have with that. If you don't already know, all you have to do to make an upgrade happen is to go to the RSI site, pledge store, ship upgrades, pick a ship to upgrade from, and then pick the one you want next. 
it just has to be at least five dollars more expensive than the one that you're trading out once you have it you go to your hanger on the site then apply the upgrade if you wanted to you could hang on to the upgrade or gift it but that's a whole nother video that starts to creep into some gray areas but you got enough to get started with playboy <laughs> Big up and special shout out to the six wise men, AKA executive producer extraordinaires of this joint. Ike the subliminal show enough, AKA too many napkins, man. Odin the Rojo Jello. Gino Garen, AKA Corvette's Commander. Hold on, the fresh recruit. Hold on, hold on. And mysterious Mike Alvear in the building. And also the saucy one, man. He's so saucy. Shout out to all the fans supporting the Dig That and Space Sim Arts. Salute to Commander Blackout, to Diedrix, to the mother, to Busser Boy, to Anthony Jackson, to Guillotine Girl, to SM Now. <laughs> Generalissimo, Commander Dr. Digital, Space Pirate McMorgan, Zayla Maru, Commander Leviathan Soul, Time Out 420, Train Man Rob, Epion Next, and Dead Ida. Oh, much appreciated, Familia. Shout out to everybody subbed up like a boss. My name is Dig and I live in Neo Noir. Till the next time, fly dirty.